schedule weather for the U.S. winter. And I say scheduled again because we have Lockheed Martin doing the weather, private defense contractor and geoengineering participant, Lockheed Martin, doing the weather modeling for the FAA. We have Raytheon, a private defense contractor, up to their neck in weather modification, doing the weather model modeling for National Weather Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. You have the foxes running the hen house. So what's the schedule weather for this winter? Right now, it appears that what is planned is a cooler than normal southern U.S. in spite of far above normal temperatures completely surrounding this region. From the northern tier, a band across the northern U.S., predicted to be far above normal temperatures, far above normal ocean temperatures. The west is supposed to be, or scheduled to be far above normal. The Atlantic Ocean is above normal. How do you have a cold zone in the middle? Because that's where much of the El Nino moisture will be steered, diverted, and ice nucleated. We'll probably see a lot of ice storms this winter. Why is there an ice storm every time we have a quote-unquote winter storm? As we saw last winter, we had the paid meteorologist uh, disinformation actors, which is what they are in the Weather Channel, and sources like that, all of those agencies, again, owned by the corporate power structure, Bain Capital, Rothschilds, and so on, Monsanto, another one. We have them explaining to us why there's a warm side and a cold side to a winter storm. Since when is there a warm side and a cold side to a winter storm? Since geoengineering entered the picture. They need the moisture to chemically ice nucleate, it's part of the process. So we see now typically thunderstorms and warm temperatures on one side of a, a quote winter storm. Then we'll have an ice band in the middle, ice storm. And then we'll have the winter storm side, the cold side, as the chemical ice nucleation process takes hold. These are unprecedented conditions. And now they're the norm. geoengineering issue, which the Trump administration is also, by the way, doubling down on. Look that one up on geoengineeringwatch.org. Trump administration geoengineering. Look it up. They're backing it. Even though they claim there's nothing wrong with the climate, they're backing climate engineering. Why? Because there's much more to climate engineering than climate engineering. Climate engineering is also weather warfare. By definition, it is weather warfare from bottom to top and biological warfare because the elements are toxic, all of which we're breathing. Lab tests prove that. Again, moving on, the geoengineering subject, countless articles in geoengineering are now being published on a daily basis all over the globe. Here's an example from the International Business Times, published a few days ago. Artificially cooling Earth by mimicking volcanic eruptions could be catastrophic, study states. From that report, again, all mainstream sources pretending the elephant in the sky of climate engineering is not really there. We have a society that's all will, too willing to pretend that as well, because waking up is 
too scary, too painful. But not waking up is going to be even more scary and painful soon. We stay on this course. From this report again, scientists across the world believe that a process called geoengineering, which involves, this is all from the report, which involves imitating the atmospheric conditions after a massive volcanic eruption by artificially injecting aerosols into the atmosphere can help counter the effects of global warming. But, continuing from the report, a team of researchers have debunked this theory and countered it by saying this process could in turn have devastating effects on global regions that are already prone to tumultuous weather patterns like severe storms and chronic drought. Of course there will be massive, catastrophic downstream effects. There is. There's no could in any of this. And imagine the sort of Orwellian world we live in when we have scientific panels, groups, organizations still pretending it's not already going on. They're afraid to admit to this for some of the reasons I already cited. If you stand against the military-industrial complex, you will be dealt with immediately and harshly. So I understand the fear from some of these academicians not telling the full truth. This is already going on. The effects are already catastrophic. But imagine the society we live in, which is even more alarming to me in many ways, a society in which can't or won't, is more the correct word, connect the dots. Incredibly visible dots, like the climate engineering in our skies and the sort of programming that goes on with people when you try to get them to simply open their eyes and look up and their complete reluctance to do so. All the while, the biosphere implosion continues. More headlines along the same lines. This one's from Newsweek, but I'm pointing out that these headlines are everywhere. They're everywhere. How hard could it be to connect the dots for the population if they really wanted to wake up? They need to, and, and the criminal behavior of the media carries much of the blame here because we have those in media actually participating in the climate engineering criminal cover-up. And they should be, must be held accountable, legally and morally, by an awakened population once we get to that point. Here's another headline parallel with the first. Artificially cooling Earth with volcanic eruptions is dangerous. The lack of regulation is deeply concerning. There's not a lack of regulation. There is no regulation, none whatsoever. From this report, a controversial plan to cool down the planet by artificially stimulating volcanic eruptions could have disastrous consequences for Earth, yet there are no laws or regulations to stop any country or private company from deploying such technology. Look at the, if you go to geoengineeringwatch.org and search massive Senate document and read the excerpts we have from that document that specifically state, this is a, a congressional Senate document that states anyone involved with these programs needs to have complete legal immunity. If this was something for the greater good, would they need complete legal immunity? States it right in this Senate document, 750 pages long, by the way, and goes over many other damning points as well. And the excerpts are there, so you don't have to go through the whole document. You can look at what we've already highlighted out, just like the immunity that the vaccination companies have, total immunity. If this was really something for the greater good, would they need total immunity legally? How hard can that be to figure out for the population? This is not about the greater good, not the case of geoengineering. Not... My name is Scott Stevens. I uh, was a television weatherman for 20 years. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. Chemtrails are a key element in the whole thing because they're obviously a way of uh, putting a highly reflective material into the atmosphere. With cloud seeding, the cooling will be achieved by making clouds reflect a bit more sunlight back to space than they would otherwise, and less sunlight reaching the surface would tend to cool the planet. So let's say we were doing geoengineering because we wanted to make uh, the weather a little bit better. The more we see these trails in the sky, the less rain we get. Virtually all scientific data, even from the proponents of geoengineering, state clearly saturating the atmosphere with particulates will create drought. Much has been made of this issue of damage from precipitation. If the issue is understanding the climatic response, which is I think most of where this is going, that is exactly where the precipitation gets higher and lower. There will be monsoon failures during that period. There will be huge hurricanes. It's likely to cause some damage in some places. Global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns, and obviously there's a lot more opportunity for work in that area. Just seeding can be pretty effective for the clouds we explored, but the interactions between seeding and precipitation in the form of drizzle are really complex. 
So we're finding the aerosols, the metal particulates, the weather engineering, whether it's skater, ionic, or organ, or the chi of the atmosphere, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal. Before jumping on the chemtrail bandwagon was I needed a motive. Without a motive, you can't say what they're doing and why they're doing it. You have to have a motive. Uh, what the derivatives are products that uh, commercial hedgers would use, such as an insurance company or an energy company, to hedge risk that's associated with weather. Precipitation or a hurricane or general heating days is what they're basically called. Certain temperatures or you know, higher temperatures are going to associate with uh, more energy. So they're going to want to hedge that risk. If you could structure a product where you say, OK, I'm going to buy insurance against it raining more than 10 inches in this area. If my risk is, say, like, say a million dollars, but I'm insuring for $10 million, then I can make it rain and collect the premium on the $10 million? Well, Of course. So the agenda was drought. The agenda was to control kill the storm, at least in that one particular spot. Major are reducing the food security of people farmers by their ability to plan what they're going to be growing. You see a tremendous and significant loss of property and uh, crop production. Uh, many times this will cause farms to go out of business and when farmers go out of business they usually have to sell and then if there's somebody waiting in the wings to buy their land and then uh, turn that uh, land over to the production of genetically modified crops, you can see where there would be kind of a strategic advantage there. The fact that it's cheap isn't necessarily a good thing at all, as I'll come to in a second. The fact that it's cheap is part of the whole hard problem of governance. The fact that it's cheap means any small state or, or even seemingly individuals could do this, and that is a very dangerous thing. There's only probably under $10 million per year and maybe far less than that being spent on geoengineering research. Um, it's a mix of a handful of government grants and some private money, including support uh, is a line of research on what's called geoengineering. The climate getting worse means that many years their crops won't grow. There'll be too much rain, not enough rain. Uh, things will change in ways that their fragile environment simply can't support. If Bill Gates invests in geoengineering and he profits from the destruction through his investment in Monsanto. Monsanto is coming in and they're saying, we have a solution for your problems. Basically, if you control the weather and the seed source, you essentially control all food production. You can kill a storm in place. That's easy to do with heart. You just change the polarization, you change the ionization of the atmosphere, and the storm will fall apart. HARP is actually an acronym for High Altitude Active Aurora Research Program. And it, uh, in the patents for the HARP system, it describes what is uh, detailed as ionospheric heating. It creates situations where crops are either uh, so severely flooded that they're destroyed. So it's very easy to add those particulates of aluminum, barium, and whatever else they want to put in there. And as you add heat to that, those particulates then radiate the heat into the atmosphere and it warms. Let's just say the storms can develop more violently, more quickly, um, in places that are not necessarily as uh, where you would expect them to be. We have altered weather patterns that are also stated as consequences of geoengineering. Since these global weather modification programs appear to have been ramped up so radically in the last decade, our, our weather here has changed unimaginably. And we've got technologies available to us now that can do, you know, continent-sized uh, projects. Is all of the persistent trails behind? We were the first ones to fly into hurricanes for the purpose of modifying them, uh, if you will. That was Project Storm Fury. I began to, to be extremely confident that we could could do whatever we, about what we wanted to with a hurricane. Project Storm Fury had been going on since 1961, and they had already done, or had done two experiments, one in 61 and 63. Well, by 1964, when I was there in 1964, I wrote the plan and, and uh, started to have them track and a mission for every flight that was uh, on the hurricane cloud cheating experiments. 
So we had documentation for everything. Operation and product current fear are very positive. His report said that we claim they should consider now if a hurricane heads straight towards Miami. You take a cloud that Mother Nature or God has provided and you alter that cloud. Well, the reason the cloud doesn't expand on its own in most cases is the fact that there's a lot of moisture, but there's no nuclei. There's nothing for the moisture to stick to. So when you provide the several iodide nuclei, it causes the water to coalesce to that nuclei, and when it does, it releases heat, which means everything starts to rise. If you produce enough nuclei at the right places in a cloud, there's essentially no limit to how fast and how far it'll grow, because it just keeps releasing heat as it goes up, and of course the heat keeps trying to rise. So with the nuclei, it's very small, and they're put off by these flares, but then water starts attracting to it, and then it builds condensation. Well, you, you put out a G into these, put out a G into these uh, uh, silverite nuclei, and they attract water. They just sponge it up. Well, when they do, that water condenses, and it releases what they call the late heat of condensation. The heat goes out of it. Oh. And the whole thing starts rising. People believe that the same aircraft can release experimental chemical additives in the air as chemical contrails or chemtrails. In this way, government agencies can either manipulate the weather or counteract global warming. But some people claim chemtrails are harming an unsuspecting public. Witnesses and researchers who believe in chemtrails say that jet contrails don't vanish within minutes as they once did. They now linger and spread, sometimes for hours, forming strange, suspicious patterns. Rosalind Peterson is one of those believers. It's not normal for us. It's a grand experiment. Peterson lives in Northern California near San Francisco. At one time, she worked for the State Department of Agriculture. Part of her job involved being aware of environmental issues. I first started noticing unusual contrails in 2002 when it was brought to my attention by a friend of mine. He took me outside of his office and we began to look at these persistent jet contrails. Peterson thought she saw a connection between aircraft activity and reports of chemically contaminated water in communities throughout California. There were unusual high spikes in chemicals and heavy metals. Yeah, right. Barium, aluminum, manganese, magnesium, zinc. And I suspect that we're getting the pollution from something in the atmosphere that's being released. Peterson became so alarmed about the chemical contrails that she formed an organization called California Skywatch, a group dedicated to clean air. I started documenting what I was seeing. I took pictures on my breaks. I took pictures at lunch hour. I started to really get angry because our once deep blue skies were no longer deep blue. They would turn into a white haze and they would turn into these man-made clouds uh, blocking the sunlight. Peterson discovered that she wasn't alone in her concerns. Hundreds of websites revealed that persistent airplane contrails had become a worldwide problem. 